during the occupation, Paris certainly wasn't that lovely, lively city I knew before the war. It was a sad place. You could see the despair on the faces of the people as they walked in the streets. And when I saw the German flag up on that beautiful monument there, the Arc de Triomphe, on my heart really broke. It was a very, very sad place. With Hitler in Paris, the Italian jackal Mussolini moved into southern France. At the port of Marseille, the French armed service colors were taken to North Africa. The French faced a bleak future. The long carefree days were over. Under the terms of the armistice, France was to be savagely divided into two zones. To the north, from the Swiss border to Bordeaux, the occupied zone. The south, the so-called free zone, Vichy France. World War I hero Marshal Pétain was appointed head of state and the much hated Pierre Laval, his deputy. Systematically, the Germans began bleeding France white. The demobilized French army was taken as slave labor to work the German industries. In the signing of the armistice, Pétain had signed the death knell of France. Well, I got involved because I was waiting for my husband and he was always late. And I saw a man in the American bar and he was reading an English book. And I said to the uh, Antoine, the uh, Corsican barman at the Louvre, that man's reading an English book, he might be a German. And uh, when Henri came along, I said, you go and find out what that man is and we found that he was an Englishman uh, he had been uh, he'd come down from after the uh, after Dunkirk he'd been left behind and he'd found his way down to the unoccupied uh, zone and he was with a lot of other British people in Fort Saint-Jean Fort Saint-Jean which is on the entrance to the port of Marseille held over 200 allied officers but many were permitted by their French captors to wander the town on parole Nancy and Henri befriended some of the men and supplemented their meager prison rations with black market food and cigarettes. Eventually, Nancy became drawn into assisting an escape organized by Captain Ian Garrow. For Nancy, it was an introduction into the world of espionage and intrigue. For more than two and a half years, Nancy traversed the south of France as a courier assisting with the Garrow Escape Network line. As the wife of a rich and powerful citizen, Nancy could travel where few others could. Each trip meant more evaders, or bodies as they were known. They were downed Allied flight crews on the move through a series of safe houses across the south of France and eventually over the treacherous Pyrenees mountain range bordering France and Spain, then home to England. In Nice, Nancy would often take delivery of some evaders from the house of the Sansons. Highly decorated by the Allies after the war, Madame Sanson, now 84 years old, lives in the same apartment, unchanged since the days over 100 Allied airmen passed through her hands to safety. <laughs> she did some extraordinary things in Nice during the occupation. Uh, she had, uh, this was a safe house, and um, it was a marvellous place to be. I used to love to have to come here and collect them because I knew I'd have a laugh with her. We laughed, we could literally say we laughed our way through the occupation. Sometimes our leader and the head of the reso said we were a little bit frivolous, but we didn't mind. She was a lovely hostess, and all the men that came through this home loved her and admired her for her courage. She never could have more than seven because she hasn't got a lot of room here and it's a very old flat. And uh, you can see if you look around this place, there are neighbors nearby. She had to be very, very careful. She lost her husband like I did. He, she lost her husband. He was a wonderful man, but it was unfortunate that he didn't survive the, uh, the occupation. And uh, I think she's very proud of the fact that on her front door, in the street, is a, a plaque commemorating 
the activities her, of her husband because he deserved it. He didn't deserve to die, but then a lot of people died just the same way. The film that follows was smuggled out of France despite all the vigilance of Gestapo, customs and sentries. It shows the young men who disappeared into the Marquis, into the forest, to face the perils of hunger or a German bullet. In 1942, German manpower was now spread over two fronts with the attack on Russia. The Nazis demanded more workers from the occupied countries to man the great war machine, and forced labor was introduced. Thousands left their homes to live in small groups where they eventually formed the anti-Nazi group known as the Marquis. Crude in its beginnings, most with no formal military training and depending on captured weapons, they lived in the forests, in the harshest of conditions. But the Marquis was to become one of the most effective internal fighting forces, essential to the Allied plan for sabotage and harassment of the occupying German army. But the men and women of the resistance were to pay a terrible price, administered by the mechanical barbarism of the Nazis. Nancy, now accepting more responsibility, was always ready to oblige those trying to organize resistance groups, relaying messages, papers, or a suitcase containing a radio transmitter to a contact. As well as her vital courier work for the escape network, Nancy was now a member of the resistance movement. First of all, I was a wife. I, I had to look after the home. I, I had to appear to our friends and neighbors that I was an ordinary person. And anything I did was in my spare time. But it kept me busy. And I think that kept me going. I never had time to worry. And I must admit, some people don't believe me, I never was afraid. And I, I sometimes I think that they, people probably think I'm mad or that I'm... Uh, telling lies but I can honestly say that I was never afraid I was too busy to be afraid and my hatred for the Nazis was very very deep very deep indeed the southern escape line out of France was now pouring Allied servicemen back to England but Nancy's involvement had not gone unnoticed the Gestapo and Melisse knew of a mysterious dark-haired woman operating the southern line. They began to hunt for her. The code name of the file was the White Mouse for her ability to evade capture. I heard that they were looking for a, somebody they called the White Mouse, but I had no idea that it was me until about two months afterwards when I was back in, in Marseille. It became obvious that they were looking for me but the the uh, german gestapo in paris and the one here in marseille hadn't got together they wanted each one wanted the victory and so they didn't compare notes and by the time they compared notes and they found out that the white mouse was madame oh, madame only fiocca well madame only fiocca had skedaddled and gone over the pyrenees